Now that we've written our script for an exponential moving average, we can move on to simulating it with past data. This is called backtesting and is accessed through what we call the composer. That's the panel on the right here, in particular the backtest tab. If you don't see this, one way to reopen the composer is to click on this settings icon. Alternatively, you can also reopen the editor tab. The first thing you want to do when backtesting is to ensure the correct script has been selected, including the version. I'm going to be testing on Binance Spot with Ethereum to USDT. Allocation doesn't really matter given that it's a test. However, I wouldn't recommend testing with anything below $100. I'm going to leave this as prioritized speed. Candle size I'll keep at one hour. And so look back days in this case refers to how much data we need to correctly load our strategy. In our case, by default, we need 20 candles and 20 one hour candles puts us at one look back day. It's not necessary to do the math on this. An approximation is probably good enough. For back test start and end, we're defining the period of data we want to test on. So that's August 28, 2021 to March 24, 2022. This period is from line 5 where I define the input of how long I want the exponential moving average to be. I'm going to leave this at 20, and I'm also going to leave all these settings as is. Now when I click Run Backtest, it'll take about 10 seconds to finish. So here's my profit loss. Pretty bad. If I click on it, I can see the simulated trade history, and I can also see it plotted on this chart here. If you scroll to the right, there are more stats you can pick from. You can filter the view based on this menu, Customize Columns. I won't go into those here, though. Now, keeping in mind this was accomplished using our default value of 20, maybe there's a chance to find an ideal version of this same strategy. So if I click Show Settings, actually, first I'll collapse this. If I go to Show Settings, I can actually copy these the previously used settings into a new backtesting composer, which is done here except maybe I want to test on two hour candles. Oops. And with period, maybe not just 20, maybe I want more than, maybe I want to test 50 periods. And so rather than separating each value of the comma, there's actually a markup language we can use. And so what this is saying is test every value between 20 and 100 in increments of two. And so that's 41 variables. But with two candle sizes, that comes out to 82 back tests. So I'm going to click Run 82 Back Tests. Okay, so not bad. Profit loss is actually positive in some cases. Now, with that said, we don't know for sure if these are the optimal parameters. So I'm actually going to run a second test. Just copy these again. I'm going to use the same settings as before. Except this time, I'm going to test a different period. I know that I know from memory that August 28 till now is somewhat sideways market. So instead, I'll do January 1st until August 28. And so this is testing the period right before, which I believe is a bull market. I'll see that actually a lot of these perform pretty well, 400%. Again, though, keep in mind this was a bull market. And actually, if I scroll further to the right, I'll see buy and hold return, which is what you would have gotten just holding the asset. So you could say in the time I selected, Ethereum appreciated 344%. That means anything below this line technically lost us money. If I look at some of these, looking for common themes, a period of length of 100, 78, 80. So most of these are on the one hour time frame, but if I click on this two hour time frame, 40. So actually, this is about the same as um, the 70 to 80 range we were seeing before. So based on this cherry picked sample, I would say that something between the 90 to 70 EMA period length would yield the best profit. Before allocating real money to this, I would definitely want to do more tests. But I think this gives you an idea of the process you go through in validating a strategy and its parameters. For more information on testing methodology, I'd recommend checking out our blog post linked in the description.
This concludes part two of our zero to one series, backtesting and batch testing. However, before you leave, I wanna show how you can get more compute resources. I'm gonna to go to my account dashboard, subscriptions, note how it says free. I'm gonna click upgrade to the community tier. This gives me up to 50,000 tests per batch instead of the 100 I used in this video. And with that, happy testing.